Hey everyone, in this video we're going to look at the new and super cool filter and backdrop filter utilities added to Tailwind CSS version 2.1. Let's get right into it. CSS filters let you modify how an element looks and you can change things like brightness, opacity, contrast, so it's super useful when working with images. Here we have five times the same image and we're going to apply different filters to each of these to see how they work. To apply any filter, you need to start by applying a filter class. This class by itself won't change anything visually, but it will enable the use of filters. So let's start with the brightness. So I will go brightness, and let's start with the low value here of brightness 50 for the first image. And you can see we've reduced the brightness of this image by half. So I'll copy these two classes, and for each of the other four images, I will paste them here and for the second image we'll go with brightness 75 and then 100, 150 and 200. And now the brightness is going from low to high through our images. Okay, let's remove these brightness utilities and now we're going to look at another filter, saturate. So saturate comes with different values as well. So once again, we're going to apply each of them. So I'll grab this, paste it four times and change that to 50, 100, 150 and 200. And here we go, the first image has almost no colors where the last one is oversaturated. Let's try another one, hue rotate, to change the hue of the image. So for this one, we're gonna go rotate 15, 30, 60, 90, and 180. And you can see how the hue is affecting the color of the sky and the sand in the different images. Filter utilities are composable. So for example, I can take this fourth image here and we're going to crank up the saturation to the maximum. So I'll come up here in this one and go saturate 200. And so now the hue and saturation filters are composed together for this image. Let's make it even more intense by boosting the contrast as well, which is another filter. And we're going to set this one to 150. And once again, now this contrast is mixed with the other filters applied to the image. Let's look at a few more examples. So I'll remove these two. And for the first one, we're going to use the grayscale filter. For the second one, we'll use sepia. And the third one, we will invert the colors with invert. Now let's say that we wanted on hover to undo the filters and reveal the real image. Filter utilities are not enabled by default for the hover variant. So unless you're using Tailwind's just-in-time mode, you'll need to enable these variants in the config file. In this case, we're not using the just-in-time mode, so I'll quickly enable these. We want to enable the hover variant for grayscale, sepia, and invert. And so now, filter utilities have a utility to undo or reset the filter. So for grayscale, I can use grayscale zero. For sepia, I can use sepia zero. And for invert, invert zero. I'll also add quickly a transition class with a duration of 300 to make it a bit nicer. And now our images are going to undo the filters and reveal the raw image on hover. Another pretty useful filter is the drop shadow filter. And for this, we're going to look at this logo instead of an image. So this logo here is currently a transparent PNG. And so if I add a background color like BG red 100, you'll see the real edges of our image, which is a rectangle with a transparent background. So let me remove that. Okay, I mentioned the drop shadow filter and you might wonder why not just use a box shadow with a shadow utility. So let's try this and see what happens. I'll go shadow LG here. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that the shadow is applied to the edges of the image on the rectangle that we've seen before, which is most definitely not what we want here. So let's remove the shadow class and instead we're going to use once again a filter. So we have the filter toggle class and then we're going to use drop shadow. So you can see we have small, default, medium, large and a few options. So let's try drop shadow MD here. And it's quite subtle, but if we zoom again, you can see that the shadow are now applied to the edges of our actual logo. It follows the letter curves, the palm tree, which is really cool and something you can't achieve with box shadow. And because it's a little bit hard to see on the video, I'll apply this drop shadow only on hover. And once again, I'll add a transition utility with a duration 
of 300 milliseconds. And since the hover variant is not enabled for filters by default, I will come down here in my config and add drop shadow and enable the hover variant. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. And now when I hover on the logo, you should see this shadow coming in and out. So that's a tour of the new filter utilities. And while we're here, I think it also makes sense to cover the backdrop filter utilities as well. The backdrop filter utilities are doing something very similar to the filter utilities, but instead of affecting the element itself, it will affect what is behind or in the backdrop of that element. So to illustrate that, we're going to take this image once again, but this time we're not going to apply any filter to the image itself, we're going to layer elements on top of it and apply backdrop filters to these elements. So that right here is the image that you could see in the browser, and then layered on top of it, we have this div which will have multiple elements. Currently we have three elements which all share one third of the width. I'll take the middle one and add a BG blue 500 background color, and so now we have this shape that is layered on top of our image and is masking a portion of it. I've mentioned that backdrop filter utilities are altering what you can see through an element, but before we can see anything through this element, we need to add some transparency to it. I'll add a background opacity with BG opacity and we will go with 30% here. So now we can see the image through the shape and you can think of this shape as a piece of transparent glass that we're layering on top of the image. Matter of fact, I'll make it completely transparent by getting rid of the background color altogether and the opacity, and instead we'll use borders just to keep reference of where the shape is sitting. Okay, nice. And now to make the demo a little bit more fun, I'll change the width of the first and last element to width full, instead of one third. And because we have this overflow X auto class, we'll be able to scroll through and move our square across the image. So now our first invisible div is using the full width, so we need to start scrolling before we see this shape and we can now hover it over the entire image. All of the filter utilities that we've seen so far in this video are also available as backdrop filter utilities. To be able to use backdrop filters, I need to start with the class backdrop filter, which will enable backdrop filters for this element. We've seen filter utilities like grayscale and I can also do backdrop grayscale and now as I scrub through the image, you can see that the portion within the square is grayscaled. Once again, this is not the image being altered, but the layer on top of it showing the image through. I mentioned you can think about this as a piece of glass that you see through. And let's imagine a bathroom window, which is usually frosted glass where you can't really see through because it's blur. So I will use the background blur, which is yet another filter we haven't looked at. And let's go with LG and take a look. Okay, let's replicate this div a couple of times and do a quick demo of different things. So the first one will be hue rotate 180. Second one will be backdrop saturate 200. Next one backdrop invert. For the next one we'll use backdrop sepia. And we leave the last one to blur LG. I'll quickly also come up here and add a spacing utility with space x80 just so each of our example is a little bit spaced out so we can see the real image in between. And let's check it out. First off, we have our hue rotation, then we have our saturation 200, our invert, sepia, and blur. All right, so that's it. These are the filter and backdrop filter utilities added to Tailwind CSS version 2.1. That about wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.